Marthe Bibonga Bikuelo um, um, from Congo DRC. Well, I decided to leave Goma to come in South Africa because I was feeling unsafe. I'm married. I'm a mother of five children. I decided to come to South Africa because I was not saved in my country. As with many other refugees, Martha and Sarah headed to South Africa hoping for a better and safer future. Unfortunately, both were confronted by rampant corruption at the Department of Home Affairs, where they were asked to illegally pay officials to receive their papers. I was just going and they just saw sending me back home. Go find money. Just go find money. It was just the same story, the same song we were just singing. Go find money. Project Lukisa is a Corruption Watch project designed to address corruption at the Department of Home Affairs, particularly corruption affecting refugees and asylum seekers. The main objective is to find some sort of mechanism to enable whistleblowers to come forward and make reports of corruption at the Department of Home Affairs. Sarah was told by an official at Home Affairs that for 3,000 Rand, she would receive her refugee status documents. However, he didn't come through for her and constantly avoided her calls, eventually saying that Sarah was harassing him. Because he doesn't want even now to hear my, when I phone, he's like, he's just shout, which means he doesn't want to pay my money back, give me a status refugee. If doesn't help me with that paper, I see my future is going to be miserable. In Martha's case, she was finally given her refugee status documents, but also at a cost. What's more, the official went even further and used Martha's refugee network as an opportunity for making more money. I found that the lady said, no, me, I can help. I say, how? You must give me 2,000. See how? Because I know it's 400 for the government. Say, okay, if you don't want, you can go. But I was in need. I give her 2,000, then you do what you do, then I get the paper. So now she's trying, like, she even called me last week because we met. And she asked me if we have a good client, uh, they need also paper. I say, okay, I will let you know. Undercover operations have revealed ongoing corruption amongst officials and by exposing them, we hope the department will bring them to justice. Give me my number, let me have the person. That's what I'm asking, how much does it, it's from Kong, how much does it cost? The status is almost 6,000, you know? The status is almost six so if, we, if I want the status... But we, not now. Not if now. somebody tells you it's giving status now, it's mm -hmm. fake. It's becoming a culture now that uh, Anywhere you go, people will ask you for a bribe. Then people who don't have uh, money to bribe officials don't get what they're looking for. This person has been going to Homer first many times. He didn't succeed in uh, renewing his paper. If you don't have a paper, you cannot open a bank account you cannot register to pay tax. So it's, it's like it's a circle. One of the main issues here is a lack of sanctions. It's a lack of disciplinary and criminal sanctions for officials that engage in this behavior. And one of the other issues is enabling whistleblowers who are very vulnerable refugees and asylum seekers to report corruption to the department. Uh, well, I was afraid to report because I was asking myself what is going to happen to my case because I have to go to renew my paper on 2018. So I will say that maybe they will refuse me to renew or maybe I will be attacked because there's a crime here. So I said maybe they will be spying me. So that I was very, very scared. The department can rely on information that we filter through to them um, in order to either take disciplinary action or refer it to the police. And in, most importantly, the details, the contact details um, of the refugees and asylum seekers are protected because we will filter information through th to the department, but we won't provide them with the details of the whistleblowers. They must understand what we are going through as a refugee. When we are going to them, we are going for the help.
not for them to asking us money because we don't have nothing. Even you can see even the, the way we are living, you can see it. We are even trying to make our life better. We leave our country because we are not safe there. We are here, we, we are thinking they were taking, they, we will be saved here. But it's becoming worse, even here. We don't know again where to go because I can't go back to my country. Even here, it's like they don't like me in this country. Now I don't know where to go.